Hello, and welcome to Adventures in Neuropathology. Today we're going to talk about meningitis and meningoencephalitis. Um, but first, if you like this video, please click the like button at the base of your screen. In addition, this video is meant for medical education purposes only and is not intended to be used for medical advice. Okay, let's get started. So today we're going to talk about menin meningitis and meningoencephalitis, um, which is inflammation, which is often due to infection, of the meninges, which is the outer coverings of the brain, and um, infection um, or inflammation of the meninges and the brain tissue itself, which is this encephalitis part. Okay, but before we start talking about the abnormal, first we need to know what normal looks like. So here's a picture of the brain that I got from Harvard, okay, and uh, we're seeing the lateral view of the brain, and this is a normal looking brain. So what we see here um, is the brain with four lobules that are visual that are visible, uh, four lobes that are visible. This is the frontal lobe, the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, the temporal lobe, in between this fissure here, which is the lateral fissure, uh, lateral sulcus, also known as sylvian fissure. There's the insular lobe. Here's the cerebellum, and we can make out just a little bit of the brainstem there. Okay, and notice that um, the brain looks a little bit shiny and it has these little blood vessels here, okay? So these blood vessels are part of the leptomeninges, which is the innermost coverings of the brain. So the brain is normally covered by three different layers. The outer layer, which is the dura, which is a very thick, dense, fibrous layer, has been removed in this image. The inner layer, which is the uh, the inner layers, which are the arachnoid and the pia, together they're called the leptomeninges, and they form this very thin, very delicate uh, uh, covering that is uh, immediately adjacent to the brain. So think about it like wrapping your brain in shrink wrap. It's very thin um, uh, surface layer, just going along the surface of the brain. It has a lot of tiny blood vessels. Um, and um, other things to notice about this brain is that the gyri and the sulci um, are normal. You can see how the gyri have this uh, kind of arched appearance. They're, they're nice and full, the, but the sulci, um, they have a little room between the gyri. So the, the gyri are the, um, the pokey outy parts of the brain and the sulci are the are the little fissures between the gyri okay so this is what a normal brain looks like so when we're talking about meningitis we're talking about the outer coverings of the brain okay so not the brain tissue itself but this very thin layer going along the surface of the brain so let me show you the abnormal brain okay here is a image of an abnormal brain and you can see how it's very different from the prior brain that I just showed you, okay? So again, let's get oriented. Here's the frontal lobe, this is anterior. The eyes would sit right here. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe. Here's the cerebellum, a little bit of the brainstem. And we can see that this brain looks very, very different from the prior brain in that the uh, leptomeninges, which is that thin shrink wrap layer going along the surface of the brain, the leptomeninges are very thick, they're opaque, there's this dense opacity um, where you can't really make out the, 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 the brain tissue underneath. Here we can make out the brain tissue underneath very nicely at the base of the brain here and here. Um, and we can see that this um, um, brain tissue poking through here, but the leptomeninges at the surface of the brain on the sup uh, sorry on the super on the superior aspect of the brain um, is very dense, very opaque. Um, 
in essence, it's not happy. So this, this is indicative of a leptomeningitis, meaning it's an inflammation, probably due to infection, of the innermost coverings of the brain, which are collectively known as the leptomeninges. If you notice here, there's a, there's a little line going across the uh, surface here, and we also noted that here, there's a little line going across the surface here here um, and and this is an artifact so basically um, what happens uh, during an autopsy is um, in order to look at the brain uh, we have to open the skull and you have to use a saw to get through the bone of the skull and so sometimes uh, the saw can dig into the brain tissue a little bit so this is artifact so don't don't pay a whole lot of attention to this little line here Okay, if we look on the other side of the brain, so basically I just flipped it over, uh, same brain. Again, we can see this artifact here that's um, from the saw of trying to get the brain out of the skull. Uh, and again, we can see that on the superior aspect of the brain, there is this dense opacity um, involving the leptomeninges, which is the um, shrink, rack, shrink wrap surface of the brain. Um, and so next we are going to look at the inside of the brain. So I'm going to cut the brain into sections and we'll see those sections right here. So here is, uh, the inset here is looking at, um, um, the outer portion of the brain and I've kind of put a line as to where this cut section is approximately. Okay. So where we're at here is we're about at the level of the mammillary bodies, which we can see here. These are these two things kind of hanging down from the hypothalamus. Um, we can see the caudate nucleus here, the internal capsule here, here, okay, um, and the anterior portion of the hippocampus here. And uh, what we notice is, again, what we saw on the uh, external inspection of the brain is that um, the leptomeninges, which are the innermost um, coverings of the brain, are very thickened. They're very uh, dense. Again, there's that uh, uh, white discoloration and opacity. And we can make that out here just along the surface as we go along. But again, as we noticed on the um, external inspection, that it's most prominent on the surface here, on the um, superior aspect of the brain. Okay, and what we can also see in this section is that in the inferior aspect of the putamen here, there are these little cyst-like structures here, and here, and here, and here. Um, and so that's, that's very concerning because if we just had this um, abnormality up here, then I could say, okay, that's a meningitis, specifically a leptomeningitis. But having these alterations here, that makes me worried about an encephalitis. So there's a lot of things that can cause meningitis. Infection is a, is a major one, but you can have chemical meningitis and other causes as well. Um, but this uh, here... Uh, very much makes me think of infection um, because there's a meningitis here and then there's um, involvement of the brain and this looks like an encephalitis here. If we go to our next uh, section, we've gone a little bit posterior. And so just to get oriented, uh, here's the corpus callosum, this is the thalamus, this is the uh, posterior aspect of the putamen here. Um, again, hippocampus, this is a uh, red nucleus of the midbrain, substantia nigra. Okay, and again, we can see that the basal ganglia are involved by these little cyst-like structures, the largest one being here, okay? Um, but again, these little cyst-like structures, and they have what is known as a soap bubble appearance. So these cysts have a soap bubble bubble appearance. They also are, are associated with a, a very uh, dense, um, um, pretty severe looking meningitis. And uh, 
so there's a few things as far as diagnosis goes um, for determining uh, the most likely etiologic factor uh, that's causing this uh, meningitis and encephalitis, um, collectively known as meningoencephalitis. And it turns out that this patient was HIV positive, and this is a case of cryptococcus. So cryptococcus is a fungus, um, and it is a defining opportunist, sorry, opportunistic infection in AIDS. So it's an AIDS-defining lesion. Um, and cryptococcus very, very characteristically likes to involve the uh, meninges, um, and it can also cause these uh, kind of soap bubble-like appearance um, of uh, these cysts within the deep gray matter. Um, so if I didn't know that the patient was HIV positive, I would consider a, a bunch of other things, but uh, knowing the history is always very important. Um, and so in an HIV positive patient with a meningoencephalitis, uh, cryptococcus is going to be um, high up on your differential. Okay, so that's our discussion of meningitis and meningoencephalitis. Uh, thank you and join us next time on Adventures in Neuropathology.